Let's get salty! Everyone, Zeddy here again with another great Dark Beyond card review, and today is Death Knight Day, and we are starting off with the Starship pieces for Death Knight, and a legendary that can blow the crap out of either player's decks. It's a weird one. I don't know what you're doing with it. We're gonna talk about these cards if you wanna win these cards. We have a giveaway going on for two regular pre-orders, two mega bundles out of my pocket to enter that giveaway. Like and comment in the video, link down in the description below, the one with that thumbnail over there. Be subscribed to the channel, and for every thousand subs we get until all the cards are revealed, and I think we're like 100-ish away. It's getting crazy. I will add another mega bundle, so hit that sub button make me go broke. Again, no limit on that. If we manage to hit the next thousand, we could hit the next thousand, buy it off if it comes out. I will add another one. So go dots. Anyways, uh, yeah, Death Knight Starship class. They'll be getting the Spirits Passage whenever you start building that Starship with any pieces, whether they be neutral or Death Knight specific. And let's take a look at the first Death Knight specific Starship piece. It is the Guiding Figure, a two mana, three two minion no runes on these cards are on any of the starship pieces which is kind of nice um spell burst trigger a random friendly minions death rattle and again starship piece so once this dies you'll start your starship and they'll all merge together and let's say you have another death rattle merged in there which we'll see in a second it, it's there it does say a random friendly it doesn't say another so it should trigger itself so this card on its own, it's basically gonna be like three mana, trigger a death rattle, right? Like with a cheap spell. Um, there's actually a hunter card in wild right now that's just two mana, battle cry, do this. But that used to be three, it's a different class. And yeah, th that's a pretty nutty card in wild. For this, it's just like, it's a little bit clunky with the spell burst, but still really cheap. And I feel like it's a card that whether you play starships or not, you might want to play. Like, it's just a good card in a Death Rattle deck. You're Yodelers of the world. You hit Puppeteer, right? Another proc is always welcome on those cards. So, certainly has a legitimate shot, like, outside of Starship, and then you put it with Starship decks. Seems really good. And you can also hit, like, Areska, do some gross stuff with that. Just seems like a solid, strong card. It's relatively cheap at two mana, no rune requirements. So you can, I'm very curious to see what rune combination will utilize these um, starships the most. I'm feeling unholy vibes or like rainbow, but we'll see. Uh, regardless, pretty good card. I'm gonna give it a four to five in standard. Um, think it has a legit shot in wild. Probably, uh, there's really not much death rattle stuff, but maybe like going like heavy plagues trying to counter some of those Reno decks in the world. Like you can play it in that style of deck, maybe. I'll give it a two in wild, but it's one that's really close because again, you might not even want to go starship with a card like this just because you get the death rattle. Like that's fine. That's Although you do lose a board spot, I guess, but how relevant is that sometimes? I guess it is sometimes. Uh, next we have the Soul Bound Aspire, the other star piece for Death Knight. Again, no rune requirements, so they're allowing you to build your starship with whatever rune combination you want. It has It's a 2-2 two -two for three mana, which is terrible, but it has summon a minion with cost equal to this minion's attack for a death rattle up to 10 mana. We can't cheat out our one hand, get this to 100 attack. We can't get the 100 mana minion or whatever, right? Um, and it's a starship piece, so you combine this, it's just gonna get bigger and bigger. Plus you have the death rattle activator on your two drop that can proc this when you launch your starship, right? So you could get a bunch of big minions. That could be quite nice. You got yodelers of the world, getting the, the bare minimum, you're getting a two drop unless it's been debuffed, right? And of course, hand buff death knight can do stuff. Although usually it targets undeads, uh, you'd have to play the non undead stuff, right? It's not an undead itself. So there is that. Uh, but overall, uh, you're building up a huge stat bomb at some point, uh, proccing its death rattle, getting that starship going, and again with the Exodor, just could do some pretty nutty stuff with this too, right? So overall, I think it's gonna go together. Piloted Shredder was basically this back in the day, had a bit more stats, was four mana though, and this gets you at least a two drop or better, can be pretty decent, like, and you get, you know, multiple corpses or give it reborn maybe, we'll see in a second. Uh, yeah, again, I think it's pretty solid. I'm gonna give it a four to five in standard, uh, two out of five in wild, where I do think it'll be too slow, but still, um, I, I don't know, the Starship stuff, it does feel slow, 
it, I don't know. I feel like it'll play out. It'll, it'll work, but yeah, maybe these decks will be a bit too slow. I'm too optimistic, but I just want slower Hearthstone decks, man. It's just what I want. Uh, and next we have the uh, payoff for some of these Starship cards or like the companion piece that pretty much every our class has in Suffocate, a four mana shadow spell again. No runes, so you can play it with all this stuff, whatever you want. Destroy a minion. If you're building a starship, also destroy a random neighbor. So similar to Assassinate, which hasn't seen play in it, like ever, I think, and it got buffed from five. Um, that's not great, right? For four mana, probably not worth it. It is a targeted destroy a minion. However, you're building a starship, you get to kill two things. That can be quite nice. It is random though, so your opponent can try and play around it by putting their biggest minion on the very end and then putting little minions in between, which I always appreciate when positioning matters a bit in Hearthstone. It's one of the things I feel like they never take advantage enough of. And yeah, it's a solid card. You probably play this in a Starship deck. It's It's got the shadow tag. So if you're playing, you know, your buttons or your razzle dazzlers of the world, you can push that a little bit. Although not really lacking on shadow spells and death knight anyways, but yeah, solid card. I feel like you play it in your Starship decks and you're pretty happy. We'll give it a three out of five in standard and definitely, I feel like a one in wild. If Starship works in wild, I don't think you have time to play a card like Suffocate. And uh, speaking of, well, we've had no runes. Now we have runes. We have the Orbital Moon, a one mana spell. Again, no spell school on this, but two blood runes, phenomenal art. Uh, this gives a minion, Taunt and Lifesteal, not too bad. If you played an adjacent card this turn, you also give it Reborn. So as long as you have played another card in your hand that bit like, or is like to the left or right of this at any point, uh, yeah, you get to give something Reborn. And that's the most powerful effect of this card, right? Taunt and Lifesteal, that's okay. But getting that Reborn on, let's say your Starship Death Rattle, that could be really darn good. You're building up either the starship pieces and adding them together, or you could just give your actual starship and activate possibly that spell burst and get that death rattle pretty good. So I guess we're aiming here for more of a double blood uh, starship. And there is like the Helm of Humiliation too, right? That is a double blood spell, which is a big hand buff, which again, if you hit one of those star pieces, that's really good, right? And it doesn't have to be an undead. So maybe double blood will be the way to go. You never know. But yeah, this is a solid little flexible card. I feel like if you're playing that deck, you probably want this and it shouldn't be that hard to activate with adjacent cards. There'll be bad situations where that'll happen where you can't, but overall it's typically not that demanding, I think. I'll give it a three. Although like a card like Death Growl hasn't really seen much play, but I don't know. I'll be optimistic about it because it looks very pretty. I like the lifesteal and in wild. We'll give it a one because I just I just don't see it. I don't see it in wild. And then lastly, we have one of the most ridiculous legendaries of this expansion. I feel like Reddit threads will be all over this card. We have the eight hands from beyond a new eight mana double blood eight eight beast for Deathite, obviously it's Deathite Day, whatever. Battle Cry, destroy both players' decks except the eight highest cost cards in each. What are you doing with this stack? <laughs> what are you doing with this card? So you got eight mana, effectively do nothing. Um, if your opponent only has eight cards left in their deck, this does nothing. And let's say, yeah, you're in the late game, you're blowing up their cheap stuff, but they're most, you're both of you are gonna be able to keep all your expensive cards. And I don't know what you're doing with this. This seems absolutely terrible, but like, it's gonna piss people off because anytime you blow up their deck or whatever, it's frustrating or blow up a specific card. It's just typically uh, the cards you care the most about are the most expensive. Those are usually your win cons, but I guess like, for example, in wild, like a Jade Idol or an Ignite be a way of maybe doing that, I guess. But like, it's so slow. It doesn't do anything when you play it. I just don't know what you're doing with this card. And we also got what, Kill Jaded? This does nothing against that too, right? You can't get rid of that portal. So let's say they played that, it doesn't matter. I don't see a world where this deck does or card does anything. I I must be missing something because I just don't see the point. It's like 
can't even play like a plague deck against it because you're gonna delete all the plagues. <laughs> so it's like, what are you doing with this? I don't know, but the flavor is great. It looks really cool. And it is discoverable as a blood card, right? It's double blood. So like Hematurge, for example, you can discover this. So might factor in one way or another, but overall, I just don't know what you're doing with this. I don't know what the strategy is. I don't get it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think you could do with this. But overall, I'm giving this a one out of five in standard, a one out of five in wild. I, I don't think you can afford to play eight mana, possibly do nothing and probably do nothing anyways, even if you delete like 10 cards because it's for both players. Like, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. But there you go. That That's the card. That's the new legendary for Death Knight. So that's all the cards for now. Tune in later today. We will be revealing some Death Knight cards, probably not reviewing. We'll maybe make it up at some point in the future, but overall should be a lot of fun. And I, I keep mentioning, we haven't seen a triple rune card in a while. I wonder, will that change in a few hours? Hmm, guess you'll have to tune in and find out. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day and stay salty, my friends.